Okay, so strap yourselves in because today we're going deep, deep into the frontiers of cancer research. Yeah. We're talking about a potential total like paradigm shift in how we understand and treat this disease. Absolutely. Think vitamins, mm. repurposed drugs, and a whole new understanding of what makes cancer tick. It's exciting stuff. It really is. And we're diving deep into a brand new paper for this one. Fresh off the presses, yeah. Like hot off the presses this September in the Journal of Orthomolecular Medicine. That's right. It's called Get This, Targeting the Mitochondrial Stem Cell Connection in Cancer Treatment, a hybrid orthomolecular protocol. A catchy, right. It's a mouthful, I'll give you that. It is. But let's break it down. Yeah, what are they a... even talking about with this mitochondrial stem cell connection? Right, it's like, what if cancer isn't just about cells going haywire, but about a fundamental energy crisis? Oh, interesting. At the very core of our cells. Okay, I'm intrigued, so tell me more. So... We all have these tiny powerhouses inside our cells called mitochondria, right? Right, the mitochondria, like the little energy factories, yeah. keeping everything running. Exactly. But this paper, they're focusing on the mitochondria inside stem cells, and that's where things get really interesting. Stem cells, yeah, they're like the blank slates of our body. They can become anything, right? Exactly, any type of cell. So what happens when the mitochondria in those cells aren't working properly? Well, that's what this whole mitochondrial stem cell connection, or MSCC, is all about. Okay. It's like a malfunction right at the heart of our body's repair system. Oh, wow. Instead of just targeting tumors, what if we could actually address this root cause? I mean, that's the holy grail, right? That's what they're suggesting. Get out of here. And it gets even wilder. Okay, you got to tell me more. They're honing in on what they're calling cancer stem cells or CSCs. 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 And these are like the special forces of the tumor world, if you will. Okay, now that sounds serious. They're thought to be more aggressive more resistant to traditional treatments, and the main culprits behind metastasis. Metastasis, that's the scary part. Exactly, that's what makes cancer so difficult to treat. Most cancer deaths, it's not the original tumor, right? It's the spread, the metastasis. So if we could actually target those CSCs? That's the game changer. Okay, so we've got this radical new theory, this MSCC, and these supervillain cancer stem cells. Right. What? Do the researchers actually propose we do about it? This is where it gets really, really interesting, right? right? This is where the rubber meets the road. All right, let's dive in. So they want to target these CSCs right at their energy source. Exactly. Cut off the power, so to speak. Exactly. How do they propose we actually do that? Well, get ready for this, because they're suggesting um, a combination of high-dose vitamins. Okay. Repurposed drugs, ones you might not expect. Yeah. Okay. And some strategic lifestyle tweaks. All right. Now you've got my attention. Vitamins. Vitamins. Like from the grocery store. Well, sort of. All right. Just talking therapeutic doses here. Okay. Much higher than your average multivitamin. And they start with intravenous vitamin C, like a lot of vitamin C. Okay. How much are we talking? We're talking 1.5 grams per kilogram of body weight. Whoa. Multiple times a week. That's a serious dose of vitamin C. It is. What is the thinking there? So it turns out that at those high doses, vitamin C can actually act as a pro-oxidant. The pro-oxidant. Which I know sounds counterintuitive. Right. But... Usually we think antioxidants, right? Right. But in this case, it may actually help to destroy cancer cells. Okay. While leaving healthy cells relatively unharmed. Interesting. Like a selective attack. So the humble vitamin C in high doses might actually become a secret weapon against cancer cells. That's the idea. By attacking their energy source. Exactly. I like it. What else is on the menu? Next up, we've got vitamin D. Okay. They recommend up to 50,000 IUs a day for patients with deficiencies, scaling down to 5,000 IU for those with healthy levels. So making sure everyone's topped up. Exactly. Because vitamin D deficiency, that's pretty common. Very common. So they're saying, let's make sure the body has all the tools it needs to fight back. Exactly. Give it the best fighting chance. I like it. And then rounding out the vitamin trio, we have zinc. Okay. One milligram per kilogram of body weight per day. Zinc, important for the immune system. Absolutely. Crucial for a healthy immune system. But it also seems to protect ourselves from those harmful byproducts of energy production. Right. Which cancer cells love. Exactly. They thrive in that environment. So we've got our vitamin powerhouses, C, D, and zinc. Right. But you also mentioned repurposed drugs. Yes. What's that all about? Okay, so this is where it gets really interesting. One of the drugs they suggest is ivermectin. Hold on, that ivermectin? Yes, that ivermectin. The one that's been all over the news. The one and only. Okay, before we go any further, 
We're not here to endorse any of the controversial uses of ivermectin. Absolutely not. We're strictly looking at the science here. The science and the research. And there is a growing body of research suggesting that ivermectin might have anti-cancer properties. There is. Particularly when it comes to those aggressive CSCs Exper and their ability to spread. Right. So putting aside all the noise and the politics, we're talking about ivermectin's potential to fight cancer on a cellular level. At the source. What kind of research are we talking about here? So there have been preclinical studies showing that ivermectin can trigger cell death in cancer cells, it can disrupt their energy production pathways, and even interfere with their ability to metastasize. Wow, that's... That's pretty impressive for a drug that's primarily known for its anti-parasitic effects. It is interesting, isn't it, how these things can have multiple uses? It's like finding a secret weapon hiding in plain sight. You could say that. What other repurposed drugs are they looking at? Another one is mebendazole. Mebendazole, okay. It's an anti-parasitic drug already FDA approved for use in humans. Okay, so a bit more of a known quantity in terms of safety. Yeah. What's the evidence like for mebendazole? Well, there are studies showing that it can actually be more effective than some traditional chemotherapy drugs. Wow. In inhibiting cancer cell growth, inducing cell death, and blocking those key energy pathways. Really? And yes, it even seems to target those CSEs and hinder their ability to metastasize. That's incredible. It's pretty remarkable. But these old drugs, suddenly they're back in the spotlight. Right. And then there's Dawn or 6 diazo 5 oxoal norlacine which is a mouthful. I know. Yeah, mouthful. But it's a glutamine antagonist, meaning it basically starves cancer cells by blocking their ability to use glutamine, a key fuel source. Ah, so cut off the fuel supply. Exactly, like cutting off their food supply. Starve them out. Precisely. So we're talking about a multi-pronged attack on these cancer cells here. Multi-pronged, hitting them from all angles. I like it, but yeah. we're not done yet, right? <laughs> you also mentioned lifestyle changes. We are. What kind of tweaks are we talking about? This is where it gets interesting for anyone who's into the world of wellness and biohacking. Okay, let's hear it. The researchers are strong proponents of both fasting and the ketogenic diet as part of this protocol. Fasting and keto? Okay, so we're really going after that energy supply. We are. That's the name of the game. Yeah, how does that actually work? I mean, how do you starve a cancer cell? So both fasting and the ketogenic diet, they essentially force your body to switch its main energy source from glucose, which is what cancer cells love. They love that sugar. To something called ketones. Okay. Which healthy cells can use just fine. So it's like flipping a switch. The body's like, all right, new energy source, time to adapt. Exactly. And the research on this is pretty fascinating. Yeah. Studies have shown that fasting can actually make some chemotherapy drugs more effective. Wow. And the ketogenic diet, which is very low in carbs, high in healthy fats, has been shown to slow tumor growth in some cases. So we're learning to kind of like hack the body's own energy system. In a way. To fight back. Exactly. I love it. And it's amazing how much power we have over that just through what we're eating or not eating in this case. Absolutely. And to really round out this whole body approach, the researchers also recommend regular exercise. Of course. Particularly endurance training, which can actually help increase the number of mitochondria in our cells. Oh, wow. Boosting their energy production even further. So working out isn't just good for our overall health. It could actually be giving our cells a fighting chance. That's the idea. Against those energy-hungry cancer cells. Exactly. I like it. And for more advanced cancers, they even suggest exploring hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Okay, that one sounds intense. It is, a little bit. What's the idea there? So it involves breathing pure oxygen in a pressurized chamber, which forces more oxygen into the body's tissues. Okay. And this can be really helpful because a lot of cancers, they thrive in low oxygen environments. So it's like we're cutting off their air supply Ex while giving our healthy cells a super dose. Exactly. Give the good guys the advantage. I like the way these researchers think. Outside the box. This protocol really does cover all the bases. It's very comprehensive. But I have to ask, is it realistic for someone to actually follow all of this? It seems pretty intense. It is. It definitely requires commitment. The researchers recommend sticking with it for about 12 weeks. Okay. But they emphasize that the dosage and duration should always be personalized, right? Of course. Based on individual needs. 
and with the guidance of a qualified healthcare professional. Absolutely. This is not about self-treating. Right. It's about working with your doctor to explore all your options. Always, always consult with your healthcare provider before making any big changes. Absolutely. It's important to remember this research is still preliminary. It is early days. We're talking about a potential paradigm shift, but a lot more research is needed. Exactly. But that's often how these big breakthroughs happen, right? Someone has to ask the question. Someone has to look at things a little differently. Exactly. So this deep dive we've gone deep into the inner workings of ourselves. Deep, deep, deep. To the cutting edge of cancer research. Our forefront. And beyond, we've explored a bold new theory, this MSCC. The mitochondrial stem cell connection. And a promising, albeit unconventional, protocol for potentially targeting cancer at its metabolic core. Exciting stuff. It really is. And before we wrap up, I always like to ask, yep. what's the one big takeaway? Oh, the one big takeaway. You hope listeners will like walk away with today. Well, I think the biggest thing is that there's always more to learn, right? Absolutely. There are always new possibilities to explore. There are always new questions to ask. Exactly. And this research, it challenges us to rethink what we thought we knew about cancer. Right. And consider a whole new approach to treatment. Hmm. Yeah. One that focuses on restoring balance and supporting the body's own incredible healing mechanisms. It's about empowering ourselves with knowledge, asking questions, staying curious. And that's what the deep dive is all about. So until next time, keep those brains buzzing and remember, knowledge is power.